Okay, cracker open. Hey, it's Janelle Waz, and welcome back to another episode of Waz Reviews. Who hasn't wanted to find love on the tragically doomed Titanic after James Cameron's movie? Well, me, but that's beside the point. Who among us hasn't dreamed about being a secret agent on the tragically doomed Titanic? Well, me again, the thought hadn't even crossed my mind. Until now. You didn't think they'd plunk you down on this bucket of bolts and millionaires alone, did you? In 1996, little over a year before the James Cameron movie introduced us to the controversy of whether or not a door can support Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet in the freezing Atlantic, You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door! A point-and-click adventure game, Titanic Adventure Out of Time, was released and featured an extensive recreation of the now-famous ship that sank on its maiden voyage across the Atlantic. The Titanic served as a backdrop for a story featuring two secret agents attempting to intercept the theft of priceless artifacts. We may never be the king of the world, but at least we can prevent war and some of history's greatest tragedies in Titanic Adventure Out of Time. But before I go any further, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I talk a lot about Star Trek, video games, and whatever else I feel like talking about. Be great to have you aboard. It's April 14th, 1942, 30 years to the day after the sinking of the Titanic. We are, let me see here, uh, Frank Carlson. A man living in a crappy little London apartment with Titanic memorabilia, Hindenburg tickets, and the rent is due. When do I get me money? When? Apparently, Carlson was a secret agent in service to Her Majesty, and he would have been a colleague of one James Bond, except that he's been canned because he so badly screwed up his mission aboard the Titanic. Could life get any worse? Well, I better leave. When do I get me money? When? So... I'm dead now? Well, apparently not, since the blast ended up sending Carlson back 30 years to the night the Titanic sank. A second chance at the mission he so failed. A chance to set history right. Setting right what once went wrong. And hoping each time that his next leap will be the leap home. We find ourselves in a nice little room on the Titanic. First class, in fact. Meet me tonight on deck. Tell no one. Oh ho ho, how deliciously scandalous! Georgia is actually a former girlfriend of Carlson, but that's not why we're here. After looking around the room and gathering a pocket watch, a key, and an ugly purse, we're greeted at the door by the steward. With the people's eyebrow! This is Smethels. He gives you an optional tutorial for how to move about the ship, and a note from a young lady. A one PP. Good night. Provided you have everything from your room, your bag, your keys, and your watch, really not much has changed in over a hundred years, you can move about the ship and interact with different points of interest. Some are just there for show, while others provide important objects or puzzles to solve. The map allows you to fast travel to different parts of the ship, but some areas you'll need to get to on foot. Luckily, the lift attendant will give you directions. Though, admittedly, I still had trouble figuring out where I was. Titanic is a big ship, after all. Also, I guess this means that I'm just walking around the ship with a huge ugly purse at 9 in the evening. Very unsuspiciously, I'm sure. Yes, a purse! I carry a purse! Well, let's roam if we want to. I decided to talk to PP first. Georgia can wait. Glory be. It's about time. You're late. Another five minutes and I'd have cancelled your mission. Well, nice to meet you too. You're late. A wizard is never late. This is Penny Pringle. She's our partner in not crime and contact on the Titanic. Due to a mix-up, she's been booked in second class while we're living the life of luxury in first. Which includes opening and closing the curtain and turning the water on and off. Our mission? We're after this guy. This is Colonel Zeitel. He apparently has a priceless and probably stolen copy of the Rubaiyat by Omar Khayyam. He's also got a protege with him that he spends a lot of time with. Nibbling pastries don't fail. I wasn't planning on it. Well, might as well start investigating the wireless room to intercept any messages. Oh, yeah! I say! Your English 
English then. I would have thought American. Oh my my, I didn't mean to insult. Hey, I'll have you know we saved you in World War. Oh wait, that hasn't happened yet. Temporal investigations will have my. Is that a joke? Finally, back to the mission. Sorry, the wireless room's off limits to passengers. Well, poop. Deck. Come here. What now? Don't you love the sea air? <sighs> no, this isn't a used car salesman. It's Max Seidelman. He's a friendly enough fellow and invites us to play cards in the smoking room. Not much else to do. Guy, you have no idea what's coming in a couple hours. But he does have a point. I don't really have a whole lot to do right now. Georgia can wait. First, let's swing by the Parisian cafe. There's a man there named Zeidel, a German. <gasps> My mission! The man right here pretending to smoke a pipe is Zeitel, and the kid is Willie, a college student of children's fables. And the conversation is... rather dull. It's the basic pleasantries you exchange with complete strangers at baby showers. Not really anything that'll help me. That reminds me, Colonel Zeitel, when I go to send you a telegram, they told me it was to be the... There are too many messages. Hmm, how interesting there, Willie. Now, if you will excuse me, please excuse us. Well, never mind the smoking room. We gotta get into that wireless room. Oh, evening, ma'am. You came after all this time. It's Georgia. I think Carlson dodged a bullet. That voice. I just heard my own voice. Former lover Georgia's trapped in a loveless marriage where she had an affair with Sasha, her husband's art dealer, who's involved with some shady business, and the money's all gone save for a necklace that she shoves my way. She plans on making a break for it once the Titanic arrives in New York, so she doesn't want her husband to take the necklace. But unbeknownst to her, but eventually knowns to us, she has a fake necklace, and her husband left the real necklace for safekeeping with... Sasha. Also, she wants me to meet her in her room while her husband is out drinking, which... Sounds like I'd be asking to get my ass <laughs> kicked. Oh look, hubby's getting plastered right now. She enchanted me, we got married and we're happy. He sounds... delightful. Enter. Oh, I am so about to get my ass kicked. You always were there when I needed you. Look, Carlson, even her husband admits she's crazy. Now, I don't know about that scientifically, but this lady's crazy. She's married, she's having an affair, and she's talking to an old boyfriend. I'll certify that right now. Charles! Oh! Sir, it's okay, I can kick my own ass. Here, take the chill out of the air. Now I think it best you leave the happy couple drowning in their happiness. Good night. Uh... Thanks? Okay, enough stalling. I have a mission to do and a message to intercept. I'll just sweet talk the officer on duty to let me in the wireless room. Now, tell me about your past trauma. South Africa. Boer War. The officer was a drinker. Hey, hey, that's great and all, but, uh, now may I go in the wireless room? Have a look, why don't you? Go on in. After borrowing Zeidel's message from the wireless room, I decode it, and it turns out that the Rubaiyat is hidden in Boiler Room 3, Coal Shoot 4. Okay, let's go ahead and pick it up. You are a passenger. Excuse me, I would speak with you. Look, I don't have any money. Forgive me, I am sorry to intrude on you, a person of such high station. This is Vlad. He's a stowaway. He needs to get a package from someone in first class. But from who, exactly? Sasha. I mean, sure, we can help the guy out, right? I wait here for your return. Your assistance will be repaid many for. But first, let's get what we came here for. Well, 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 just like the telegram said. I'll be taking that. Nobody shoots me on the Titanic! Well, good thing I just saved, and... Yeah, if you're playing this game through GOG and, I assume, Steam, I highly recommend saving often. The game likes to crash a lot. Well, since I already have the Rubaiyat in my save, I'm going to put it back somewhere else, where only I know where it is. Alright, now that I've done that, might as well pick up that package. Hope I'm not transporting drugs or anything. Illegal drugs are bad, so don't mess with them. 
illegal drugs are bad news. Don't mess with them. I just want to shake some sense into you kids that are using drugs and think about using it. So remember, don't. Yes? Billy Zane? No, that's not Cal from the James Cameron Titanic movie, but Sasha Barbican. Yes, the same homewrecker Georgia had an affair with. Our history is quite complex. Yeah, 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 just give me the package. Thank you. I must see Mr. Barbican. I have bad news. I am looking for something. Something very important. But it's not here. I know nothing about it! Certainly not a priceless book or anything! <laughs> As it turns out, Zydel's plan is to exchange the Rubaiyat for a painting, which Penny is sure there's a reason why the Germans want this painting, so we better go after it. After doing the purser's job, which includes finding a cufflink and sending a message through Morse code... <laughs> ...and overhearing an argument between Zeidel and Sasha... The Rubiat, it was not at your drop point. You are sure? Most definitely. But I put it there myself. You mean Adelitz, your associate? No longer my associate, I am afraid. Looks like Willie's not going to complete this voyage. As well as attempting to redirect the Titanic. <coughs> I think you've seen enough. Trying to help a sketchy steel man avoid being blackmailed by a former maid he got pregnant. Honestly, he deserves to get caught. And trying to steal from Discount Billy Zane himself. And failing. What are you doing in my cabin? I finally made it to the cargo hold to get the painting. And it's not here. Well, if only you'd been faster. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done so many side quests. Meanwhile, Zydel's protege, Willy, wants to fence with me. Time for all those hours of watching Star Trek to come in handy. <laughs> Alex. And honestly, I didn't learn much from him other than Zydel doesn't really have an interest in art, which we already knew. By the way, buddy, I'd watch your back. No longer my associate, I am afraid. Well, better tell Willie's girlfriend that he's in danger and not Willie himself. Willie, what's happened? Okay, I have to stop here a minute. One of my hobbies is historical costuming, and because of Downton Abbey, I learned a bit about early 1910s fashion. You know, Titanic era. What a tragedy. The costuming choices in this game are hit or miss for me. Penny's outfit looks alright for the era. Heck, even some of the ladies on the ship are okay. Georgia, not so much. She looks more like she came out of old Hollywood, if anything. This outfit, though, absolutely not. Bare shoulders? Bare shoulders? Like, no, that wasn't even a thing at this time, even for formal wear. I mean, sure, the voice acting is pretty bad for this girl. Willie, what's happened? But, girl, that dress is scandalous! Okay, resume. Willie's girlfriend mentions that he had a notebook that's super important and we should probably try to find it because it's not like I didn't fumble the painting or anything. Please help him if you can. A few moments later, Willie Hadelitz is dead. Oh, great. I lost the painting and now Willie's dead. Not doing so well, are you? It turns out that Willie's notebook wasn't just any notebook. It has the names of some Russian revolutionaries who are planning to overthrow the Tsar. If it can be recovered, the Tsar and his family will be safe. Since there's already been a murder on board the ship, I'll be dealing with some rather dangerous characters, so Penny gives me something that will surely save my life in a bind. A pen! The pen is mightier than the sword. Filled with knockout gas. Oh good, I'll be safe with this. It's not like anyone's got anything deadlier on the Titanic. <laughs> Willie left behind some clues taken from the Rubaiyat and... Yeah, the game kind of makes you go on a fetch quest at this point until Max tells you to go up the smokestacks because he saw Willie up there at one point. Good old Max, I'll be sure to buy a used Toyota from you. Back in the engine room we go. You? You have interfered in my affairs for the last time. Oh, really? How many you haven't, bub? That's my purse! I don't know you! <laughs> well, that's the last we'll see of him, I'm sure. 
<gasps> the notebook! There's a clue on the notebook. I think that notebook is for me. Please. I'll never let go! I'll never let go. Zydel goes into a full villain speech, as all mustache twirling villains with pencil thin mustaches do, but it goes on for just a little too long. An iceberg. They've run into an iceberg. I will be taking that notebook now. <laughs> okay. As a Chicagoan, I see the words, I have something for you. And I think of one particular commercial that every Chicagoan has been subjected to. I've got something for you. Yep, that commercial was real. Anyways, this bird's gotta fly! Ah! Oh, son of a! We awake on tax day, April 15th. The Titanic is in the process of sinking, and here I am without a notebook or painting. The Lady Georgia's, of course. I've poisoned her. Oh, great! Just what I needed! Is there any more <coughs> we could pile on to the top of the outcome of this case? So... Zydel poisoned Georgia and would only give me the antidote if I give him the painting. And the painting is kind of important and not supposed to go into the wrong hands. Sorry, Georgia. Needs of the many. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. As the ship is sinking, shots of the Titanic are shown in gloriously cheesy 90s 3D graphics. And it's not bad looking, I'll admit it. Now, in real life, the ship took a few hours to sink. In-game, I swear, it feels like it only gives you like 10 minutes to get off the boat. The painting is in the hands of Jack. No, 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 not that Jack. The brother of the maid from earlier. Apparently, Mrs. Steelman ran off with the maid's baby, and I'll get the painting if I can get the baby. The notebook, on the other hand... You again? Well, I have a bone to pick with you. Oh. Uh, hey, 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 listen, buddy, uh, maybe we can work something out. Please! It turns out that Vlad has both the notebook and Georgia's real necklace. As a member of the group The Black Hand... The Black Hand? Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Vlad plans to fund the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand with that necklace, which would kick off World War I. But we are at war with Germany. However, if I give Vlad a shawl to disguise himself as a woman to get off the ship, he'll agree to trade one item, and only one item. I ended up going with the notebook since it seemed to be the more important item. Sure, we'll get World War I, but maybe Russia will be a little more stable. With the ship sinking fast and Mrs. Steelman nowhere to be seen, and the fact that I don't think I could even get to the lower decks to talk to the maid anymore, and the lifeboats all being launched, Things aren't looking very good for Carlson. But lo and behold, a spot on the lifeboats just opened up! Even though I'm pretty sure they were already launched? Well, whatever, I gotta get off this ship! So, I got off the boat with the Rubaiyat and the notebook. That should ensure that at least some of history's tragedies were avoided, right? When the Nazis attacked, an old and feeble Tsar proved no match for Hitler. And neither were we. Oh, I turned the world into that episode of Star Trek Enterprise. This is why you don't screw with time! So, what happened? Well, of course, I couldn't let that happen, so I started the game up again, and you're encouraged to go back and try for different endings. For one thing, now that I know what I was doing, no more dilly-dallying. Get the Rubaiyat and get the painting as soon as possible, and then snatch the necklace before an old lady plops it into the sea. Zydel and Sasha are all like, somebody stealing all our stuff, and I'm walking around the ship with a Mary Poppins bag filled with their stolen stuff. It was pretty great. By the time the notebook plot came around, I already had the Rubaiyat painting and necklace in my possession. You have stolen from me. Now I must take what is mine. Nobody 
he shoots me on the Titanic! <laughs> sucker. You need to tend to your own affairs. Fortunately, you've left my valuables undisturbed. So when the ship started to sink, all I had to do was get the notebook from Vlad, who doesn't even have the money to essentially fund World War I. And with all the extra time I had, I even saved the maid and her baby. My baby! Don't worry, ma'am. I'll save your baby. Georgia, unfortunately, still went down with the ship. Ah, finally, the good ending. Basically, both world wars were avoided, the Tsar and his family lived, and Carlson is happily retired in a prosperous, peaceful world. One can only imagine how different it could have been. Would have been, if we had failed. And that was Titanic Adventure Out of Time. And honestly, it's a pretty solid game. Sure, the voice acting isn't great, and the graphics, while probably cutting edge for the time, are delightfully cheesy at best today, but it's still an interesting story woven into the Titanic tragedy that brings in world events. Heck, alternative history is a popular genre of fiction, and there's definitely that with several different endings that are influenced by your actions during the game, though I only went over two of them. I also like the detail put into the Titanic in this game. Other than some areas being closed off for the story, you're free to explore the ship at your leisure. Even though you have a watch with you, the game for the most part isn't really timed except when you hit certain story points. Difficulty-wise, this game is doable without a walkthrough, though I'll admit to looking at some hints towards the end to get the good ending. I did get lost a bunch of times on the ship, but the map and lift attendant do help you figure out where you need to go. This isn't a super long game, but the puzzles may require you to spend a little bit of time with it. If you're mad at Rose dropping the necklace into the ocean, maybe give this game a try and change history for the better. So what do you think? Have you played Titanic Adventure at a time? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did the alternative history elements work for you? And what are some of your favorite Titanic themed stories? Please leave comments below and discuss. As always, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Waz Reviews. If you like what you see, why not give my video a like and subscribe to my channel? Tell your friends! Until next time... Ship. Out of danger.